Hello everyone, this is Professor Nelson from Electronics. This time, we're going to watch a very interesting video about this microwave oven motor. This is a low consumption motor, which is responsible for rotating the plate inside our microwave oven. According to its characteristics, it only consumes 3.5 watts. It can be connected to 220 or 240 volts of alternating current. Its speed is only 40 revolutions per minute. That means if I connect 220 volts here, the motor will rotate slowly. Why? Because it has gears inside it. Like these ones here. This type of gearing inside it allows the engine to have a lot of torque, that is, a lot of force, but in exchange it reduces its speed. Now what happens if I turn the shaft and don't connect anything to it? Well, in theory, I should have an output voltage of 220 volts on the terminals. This needs to be confirmed with a multimeter to see if we can actually get an electric generator, since that's the purpose of this video. So let's see if this motor can serve as an electric generator. Let's confirm if the voltage we get here is equal to the 220 volts indicated on its specification sheet. To do this, we set the multimeter to alternating current at the maximum range it has. Remember that it's alternating current, so there would be no polarity in the terminal connections. Okay, let's test it. Now, pay attention to the multimeter display. You can see I can reach up to 100 volts. However, I need to apply quite a bit of force. Now, I'll need a lever to turn this shaft. One like this. We're going to use this lever to turn the motor. Okay, now pay attention to the display. Well, we can reach up to 150 volts as you just saw. And that's quite interesting because it means this motor can be an electric generator. To confirm that, let's test it by connecting something to its terminals. We're going to use this light bulb. This is a 5 watt light bulb. As you can see, it's a regular light bulb. and we spin the motor again. As you just saw, it works. It works like an electric generator. That means we can use it. But doing that will tire me out. So, the best thing would be to be able to attach something to the shaft to spin for a much longer period of time. For this, we need to place a motor. We'll need to place the motor here. A motor like this one here. This is a high-speed 12-volt motor that we can connect to the shaft. Right there. And with that, We'll make the shaft of the other motor turn. However, this one doesn't have enough power to turn the shaft. We would need a motor like this one. With gears like the one here, so it has enough power to turn the shaft.
For that, we're going to use this small 5 volt motor, which already has those gears inside. This will help us a lot to make this shaft turn. Okay, let's connect it with some 3D parts. Okay, we've now connected our direct current motor to our electric generator. Now let's see if the shaft turns. Great, it turns very well. Let's connect the outputs to the light bulb. But first, let's measure it with a multimeter. We connect the motor to a power supply. We turn on the power supply. Look at the multimeter display. We have 88 volts. Now we have 120 volts. And with 6 volts, we have 130 volts. And with 150 volts, we have almost 7 volts. Okay, we have up to 150 volts constantly. Let's test it by connecting it to the light bulb. Don't forget that you're only connecting the bulb to the generator. And be careful not to touch the wires coming out of the generator. Turn it on and pay attention to the light bulb. We turn it off. We turn it on. Well, as you just saw, it works. Now, however, there's a drawback to this design. In this motor, we have a reduction gearbox, or we have several of these gears inside it. We're losing energy to get these gears to turn. And inside this motor, we also have several of these gears, and we're also losing energy. Therefore, the ideal would be for this motor to directly drive the motor shaft. That is, to move the rotor so we don't lose energy in these types of parts. Therefore, we're going to see how to connect this high revving motor directly to the shaft of this other motor, to see if we get more voltage than with that method. And that way, we can improve the efficiency of our electric generator. So perhaps we can use this project in future videos. So, let's move on to doing that. Okay, now to remove the cover from our engine, we're going to have to remove the four locks on the cover. For that, we're going to use needle nose pliers. Okay, 
Now we'll find a screwdriver and carefully pry it up. Okay, here we have the gears we mentioned a moment ago. Next, let's disassemble them in an orderly fashion so we can reassemble them later. We carefully remove all the gears again. Well, internally, it only has that. And here we have our rotor, which turns the shaft. And in this case, it's a permanent magnet, as you can see. This permanent magnet is what allows us to have 220 volts here, or what would allow us to reach 220 volts. This would be the rotor, and inside we would have the stator, which is surely full of coils. However, what matters most is this one here. We put it back in, and we're going to try to somehow attach the other motor to its shaft. And make it spin. Since it can actually spin freely, it doesn't require much force. So let's see how to attach this. Right there. And that way, make it work. So, let's design and 3D print the parts. Okay, after a moment on the computer, we've finished the designs of our parts so we can attach our direct current motor to our microwave oven motor. So let's move on to coupling them. Now we have the coupling finished. So it's time to test how many volts this model delivers. So, let's measure the voltage it delivers in this configuration. Okay guys, now we're going to test our electric generator without using the gears on either motor. Let's see how efficient this configuration would be. So let's test it. We put the multimeter on alternating current voltage and pay attention to the multimeter. We're going to start with 5 volts. We can see that we have 100 volts. Now with 6 volts, we have 140 volts. One hundred and seventy five volts with only seven volts. And with eight volts, we have more than two hundred volts. And notice that with almost 9 volts, we reach more than 220 volts. If we increase or decrease the engine speed, we increase or decrease the generator voltage. Which is quite interesting. Remember that hydroelectric generators work more or less this way, delivering large amounts of voltage. And as you just saw, we can obtain more than 220 volts with just 9 volts. Therefore, we will try not to increase or raise more than 9 volts to avoid exceeding the voltage. 
And as you can see, this system without gears is much more efficient. Now we are going to test it with the spotlight to see the result in a practical way. It works quite well, and it's much more efficient than using gears, as you just saw. The bulb lights up very well. However, be very careful not to touch these terminals since we reach more than 220 volts. This could be dangerous, so be very careful. Very well, guys. This way you could see that this motor can work as an electric generator. However, it depends a lot on the power of our microwave oven motor. If we had a more powerful motor, we would have a more powerful electric generator, which would be quite convenient. So, this concludes the video. Now, don't forget that if you like the video, a like helps the channel a lot. See you in the next video. Bye bye.